Now on to some other news. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has officially endorsed Joe Biden for president. Joe Biden for president of the United States because he will be an extraordinary president. He knows how to get the job done. When our nation faced the Great Recession, it was Joe Biden who The pre-recorded announcement comes days after more than 200 black women signed an open letter to Biden urging him to choose a black woman as a running mate. CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe has more on that race. Joe Biden knows a thing or two about being number two. The next vice president. And knows exactly what he's looking for in a running mate. That they could be president. And the public look at that person and say, she is capable of being president of the United States tomorrow. Biden's list is expected to include a mix of governors and lawmakers, many of whom aren't shying away from the speculation. If he asked you to be his running mate, would you say yes? Yes. I'm honored to be considered. My mission is to say out loud if I'm asked the question, Yes, I would be willing to serve. Only two women have ever been asked to run for vice president, and neither helped their party win the White House. Geraldine Ferraro of New York. In 1984, eager to shake up the race, Democrat Walter Mondale chose New York Congresswoman Geraldine Ferraro. If we can do this, we can do anything. And in 2008, Republican John McCain asked Alaska Governor Sarah Palin to be his partner. You know, they say the difference between a hockey mom and a pit bull, lipstick. Biden says he plans to announce his choice by July. He's already facing significant pressure to pick a woman of color. Amy Allison, founder of She the People, a group that promotes minority women in politics, argues that Biden can win by picking a black woman and boosting minority turnout. This is a kind of strategy that uh, Joe Biden and his campaign need to keep in mind and have a woman of color on the ticket. I think it would be a fatal campaign mistake to take black voters for granted. Like many of us, Biden is stuck working at home, campaigning and fundraising from Delaware. He said recently that because of the pandemic, he's concerned President Trump might try changing the date of November's election. But the Constitution says only Congress can do that. Ed O'Keefe, CBS News, Washington. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. We're going to bring in CBS News campaign reporters Tim Perry and Lecrae Mitchell. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. Um, Lecrae, I'm going to start with you. Um, you spoke to a number of uh, female activists, uh, state party leaders. Why do they think now is the time for Joe Biden to, pl to pick a black female running mate? Great question. And it was really a pleasure working on this story because it's such an important issue. And as we reported, you know, since 1972, for the past 12 presidential elections, when black women have voted in um, presidential elections, they voted for the Democratic candidate at least more than 86 percent, at a rate of at least more than 86 percent. So talk about loyalty in numbers. There you have it. And so a lot of the women that we spoke to said that it's time for black women to be able to see themselves represented in leadership and that it's time for that loyalty to be rewarded in a sense. It's not enough anymore to just say thank you and to acknowledge it, but it's time to put black women in those key roles and in those key positions. And we actually spoke to a number of people, um, one of the people being uh, the former South Carolina state director for Beto O'Rourke, who said black women have a pulse on their communities, that they live in understanding and they come from a place of understanding. Why wouldn't you want a black woman in a top leadership role at a time where she says the Democratic Party needs someone to help it better shape its identity? And you also had Amy Allison from She the People, a large a national coalition of women of color, who said that it would be a monumental mistake, quite frankly, for a former vice president. President Biden to not consider and commit even to putting a woman of color um, as or selecting a woman of color as his running mate. Uh, so, Tim, uh, Lecrae spoke to uh, activists uh, and local party officials, but you've spoken to several black women in Congress. What did they tell you? Uh, they essentially say the exact same thing that Lecrae just mentioned, that it is past time for the Democratic Party to select a black woman as a vice president. And moreover, it's past time for Democratic presidents to begin appointing black women to 
uh, positions of leadership. And uh, Marsha Fudge, a congresswoman from Ohio, said it to me best. She said that black women are the foot soldiers of the Democratic Party. And, you know, in the last elections that Democrats failed to win, they failed to motivate their base, which she says are black women, to show up to the polls. And so they have several candidates who they say are already qualified to be the vice presidential pick, uh, ranging from congresswomen like Senator Kamala Harris to s certain mayors around the country, as well as certain business leaders as well. And so they're saying that it's Again, past time for this to for the Democratic Party to acknowledge the achievements and the contributions that Black women have made to the Democratic Party. Um, you brought up Kamala Harris. She's one of the names that people have been bouncing around, as you mentioned. Um, what did and you actually followed her on the campaign trail? So, do you think that being VP would be something that she would entertain? Well, given her past interview, she has not come out and directly said that she wants it, but she always says that she's honored to be considered as part of the conversation. And she's taken a slightly different approach than another black woman who's being considered, Stacey Abrams, the former uh, House leader in Georgia, also the former Georgia uh, governor candidate in 2018. And she has specifically come out and she's been unapologetic in saying that she wants the position. She says she's more than qualified for the position. And she says, uh, similar to what a lot of the women that I spoke to in Congress have been saying, that it's time for the Democratic Party to acknowledge the contributions that black women have made to the party. Uh, women of color as well, but specifically black women. Senator Kamala Harris over the weekend said in an interview, that it will be important for Joe Biden to choose a woman of color. She didn't go far enough as to saying a black woman, but she says a woman of color. But again, Senator Kamala Harris is specifically and has repeatedly said that she's focused on handling uh, the COVID-19, the crisis. She is a senator right now, and she's got a very large state to look after. And she has been, as she just said, very busy handling that crisis. So she hasn't really come out and specifically said that she wants the position, but she also hasn't said that she doesn't want it either. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Lecrae, one of the things that I think, uh, I'm sure the party leaders uh, in the Democratic, Democratic Party are thinking about is how to capture the widest number of Democratic voters uh, come 2020, come th this election. And it's going to matter if it's a, somebody like Senator Kamala Harris or, for example, Stacey Abrams, because whilst they are both black women, um, I don't want it, you know, the discussion shouldn't uh, uh, be just about a black woman. It should be about the person who most adheres to the party ideals for the Democrats, the things that they're most interested in, the things that they're most uh, willing uh, to get done, to accomplish, and who will be able to galvanize um, that the largest number of voters to bring them to the polls. So, Yes, black woman. A lot of people in the Democratic Party agree that that's got to be uh, a key uh, decision for former Vice President Biden. Then the question becomes, which black woman? And I guess I'm curious what you're hearing about the pluses and minus of the various women that are up for consideration. I, I think that if, if we had a mini head to our story, a mini headline, it would be, you know, Yes, I'm excited about the possibility of a black woman, but it needs to be the right black woman or the right woman of color. It has to be someone with experience. It has to be someone who's talking about the key issues that are important for black women, like black maternal mortality rates, like racial justice, like economic equality. So it's definitely not to be taken lightly that while people are excited about the prospect and think that it should definitely be, it's definitely time, there was, you also had that couple time and time again with, but it needs to be the right woman because if it's not, representation may not matter if that person isn't able to, like you pointed out, Black, bring out the base during this time. I had I, I spoke with Georgia Democratic Party leader Nikema Williams, who also happens to be the first Black woman in that role and is a Georgia state senator. And she essentially said that 
that's what she saw from her point of view in 2018 with Stacey Abrams at the top of that ticket. She said what you saw is that she was able to bring out black women and other coalitions as well. And that's the power of putting a woman of color at the ticket is what I heard time and time again. They don't only bring out black women. They bring out every different coalition that the Democratic Party would need in order to win in the general election. And some of the other names that came up included Val Demings, you, you had, um, you know, Stacey Abrams, as we mentioned. Uh, we, and then we also, you know, heard other people say women who aren't women of color, but that they think would do well representing the issues of women of color, like Senator Elizabeth Warren. She came up as we were talking. One thing that I do think is important to mention, though, is that when it came to things that these women and political leaders that we talked to said that they do not think would be acceptable, is they do not think we should have someone as a <coughs> who cannot connect with a diverse electorate, who cannot garner support with black voters, and particularly with black women voters. And so that's something that they said is key in this conversation that we can't forget. It has to be someone that has broad appeal over multiple coalitions um, so that so that you do have a high voter turnout in the general in the general election. Yeah, it's a great point that uh, both you and Tim are making, Lecrae. And look, I think for a lot of Americans, uh, many are finally happy. There have always been qualified women to uh, take on this role, and even that of the President of the United States since the founding of this republic. But in 2020, certainly uh, in recent years, it has seemed uh, act actually doable, because you not only have, as you mentioned, Lecrae, qualified uh, candidates like Elizabeth Warren um, or Senator Amy Klobuchar or even Gretchen Whitmer, but now you've got uh, an, an enormous number of African-American women to choose from, including Marsha Fudge from Ohio and Val Demings from Florida and Stacey Abrams, which, who we already mentioned, or Keisha Lance Bottoms uh, or Kamala Harris. I mean, it's not as if people in the Democratic Party and in this country are scratching their heads going, well, who can we pick? There are tons, tons of qualified uh, women and specifically qualified African-American women um, that, you know, would would be a perfect choice should the former vice president go uh, that route. So I'm really uh, happy that you guys are reporting on that and talking to lawmakers and party bosses about what they think uh, or who they think the best uh, candidate would be. So we thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you.